Hello, in this video I'm going to speak about artificial coevolution. So, uh, what is artificial coevolution? The term coevolution is used when two or more species affect reciprocally their evolution. We can see here a photo uh, about uh, one of the coevolutionary scenes. This has to be to do with the competitive coevolution. This is the, the main types. We have competitive coevolution, mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. We start with uh, uh, asking the chat GPT what is competitive coevolution. And the answer is this uh, competitive coevolution is a process, in, a process in which two or more species or entities adapt to evolve in response to another changes. We can see here that, for instance, an example is the predator and prey. Uh, because they engage in competitive coevolution. So when one, for instance, predators develop better anti-strategies, the prey evolve better defense mechanisms. So then we have uh, mutualism, and the mutualism, uh, the example, for instance, is uh, between bees and flowering pot plants. In this case, uh, there is a mutual, a mutual beneficial between the two species. Then we have parasitism. In parasitism, of course, the parasite is benefiting at the expense of the host. Uh, also, we have here an adaptation to, to each one of the species. And finally, uh, we get commensalism. Commensalism, uh, we, one of the species is not affected and one uh, gets uh, benefit. Uh, this is, uh, for instance, watch in whales and these barnacles. Okay, so um, regarding the artificial coevolution, which is the theme of this, uh, this video, uh, the first implementations uh, were based on genetic algorithms and inspired in the principles of the predator prey. The first use of uh, of uh, coevolution as an optimization technique was proposed originally by Danny Ellis in 1991. This is the, pap the paper, uh, which is entitled Coevolving Parasites Improve Simulated Evolution as an Optimization Procedure. Uh, Danny Ellis uh, tried to sort a kind of uh, sorting uh, network out the problem. Uh, the objective was to, to minimize the number of comparisons or data exchanges between the network levels. So he achieved better results with the competitive coevolution. So he used a population of hosts uh, representing the, the, the solution so for the problems and then a population of parasites rep uh, representing the, the tests for the, for the, the solutions. Uh, the network. So the fitness for, from the solution population depends from the number of cases it can solve from the population of parasites and the fitness from the test elements depend from the number of cases that, it, that the solutions could not sort. So from this interaction, interaction between the population of hosts and the population of parasites, uh, it uh, avoid premature convergence, which, which is a problem uh, frequent problem in genetic algorithms and also improve the testing quality and the solution obtained. So, uh, other applications of coevolution, uh, artificial coevolution, can be uh, found in the, a work by Axel Rode in '87 about the prisoner's dilemma. We are going to speak a little bit about this one. And also uh, learning strategies for games, uh, which was uh, addressed by Rosing and Bell in 1995. These are the papers. Uh, this one is available in the actual in the internet, I think. So uh, uh, there is an interesting relation between the game theory, coevolution, and the Nash equilibrium. So uh, the the when you have this uh, game. Uh, which is like uh, the situation we got where we got uh, two interrogators and two uh, and two in, in implied in a crime in two separate rooms. Uh, this is called the the, the prisoner dilemma. Uh, the, the, 
there are there are several options that uh, the employees can have. They can keep silence is option one. In this case, they are cooperating, or they can betray the partner or defect, which is the second uh, the second uh, possibility. So they don't know what is happening in the other room, and this is the prisoner dilemma. It was introduced by Merrill Floyd and Melvin Drescher in the fifties. So these are the, the four possibilities. They can either uh, cooperate, both, both of them, assuming that they cooperate and, and they, they keep silence. In this case, we, they will have, uh, okay, two years to, to each one of the, to be. And okay, if one of those, for instance, the, the first one, um, keep silence uh, and the, or betrays and the other one. So these are the, the possibilities. One gets 10 years and the other one zero years. These are the these possibilities. And then when two of them, they uh, betray the other one, then both of them get 10 years. Okay, Th these are the four possibilities of the prisoner's dilemma. And uh, this one here, uh, where they keep silence, both of them, is the optimal Pareto strategy. So this is the better one that they can, they can achieve for both of them, if both of them cooperate. And the other one, where they both defeat the other or betray the other, uh, they uh, it is called the equilibrium strategy uh, and it is related with the Nash equilibrium. So the this is about Nash equilibrium, you, you can and the Nash life, you can uh, see this uh, picture, this, uh, this, which is quite interesting, where uh, Russell Crowe plays the Nash, uh, and uh, you can see the trailer here. It's quite an interesting uh, movie. So, uh, another uh, application, other applications about artificial evolution, you can find. Jan Paredes, in 1994, is he applied for the problem of constraint satisfaction. This is the paper, coevolutionary constraint satisfaction. Um, and also, okay, myself and uh, Jones in, uh, in 96, 98 and 2000, is missing a zero here. This is the paper in 2000, coevolutionary design of PID control structures. This was proposed where one of the populations represented PID controllers in a genetic algorithm, and the other one represented uh, models, uh, parameters of uh, plants to be controlled. So, um, there is another um, different type of coevolution, which is cooperative evolution, was also explored in 1991 by Asban and Mills to solve a kind of planning and scheduling problem. This is the paper here. And we can see here that he had a population representing each of the components, component one, component two, and component n. And then he had a, a kind of share resources. This was representing the machine shop. And then he had a kind of population of arbitrators who was crediting the, the fitness to each of the populations. And then, uh, later on, in 1994, Potter and Dijon, they proposed a cooperative coevolution strategy in this paper here. Uh, and uh, this, in this case, uh, we have several GAs, genetic algorithms as well. And then they have a representative who was selected to be merged in a kind of, in this part here. And then there was the collaboration applied to the domain, and then we got the fitness, uh, and then the gene was uh, giving back the representative, okay, for the problem. So this is like uh, the, what I have to, to present you in this uh, presentation. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.